Hey guys, my name is Nicolette Mashile. I am also known as The Financial Bunny. Welcome to The Financial Bunny TV. Today we're talking all things investing. Remember, we're carrying on with our investing series. And I just thought, you know what? Before I actually get to work, let me shoot this video because I think what I'm thinking is something that is worth putting out there. But remember, everything that I say is not financial advice. If you are going to be doing anything with your money, please do seek the appropriate advice from a financial advisor that is registered with the FSCA or the body in your country that regulates all financial institutions. So let's talk a little bit about investing. Imagine yourself in this scenario, okay? So, and it happens to a lot of people when they start working, they bump into a company like um, one of these big financial institutions. There's a green one, there's a blue one. Um, they all come in all sorts of colors, right? boxing, right? Um, you meet one of them and they offer you a what, what maximizer, a balanced fund, a what, 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 what. And they tell you, no, you're ready to start investing. All you've got to do is put in 300 every single month. And you do this for five years. And then after five years, you realize that actually my money didn't even grow. Or my money grew by such a small margin that I'm actually like, I, what is this investing thing? I think this investing thing is kind of useless, right? And then one day you are sitting on social media and you bump into Nicolette's thread about you've got to invest in shares. Oh my goodness, part of your investment portfolio needs to include shares. Come here, there you are in, right? Now you want to start investing in shares. Or then another day you bump into another person and they're talking about rental income, buy property, inv uh, rent it out and collect the, the rental and, 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 and so on forth, right? So people are talking about investing and investing becomes really exciting for you and you think it's the next step that you need to take. And of course, it probably is. Everybody needs to invest their money because we all need to put our money away for the near future, uh, for whatever financial goals that we've got. But I want to just throw in some caution, right? Um, and it happens a lot and I've seen it um, because some of the people that I do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with, one of the things that always comes up is I want to start investing. I want to get into investing. And then I ask the question, what do you think investing actually is? And then obviously people have the textbook answer. I think investing is putting my money away so that it grows. And I say, by how much do you think it's going to grow? All right. And then that's when you start to see the eyes. Some people will say, I actually don't know. Or people will say, I want it to double. And I'm like, okay, what is your time horizon? So how long do you actually have to invest? And people will say, I've got this uh, uh, for five years. I've got three years, not too long. And I'm like, you're not going to get your money to double in those years. And then you see this disappointed look in people's faces. And I'm like, you're either going to trade for you to be able to get that money. But when you want to invest, you've got to remember it's long term. So I think there's been a lot of buzz and excitement around investing and everybody wants to invest. And it's good because investing is good for your money. You've got to put your money somewhere where it works for you just as hard as you wake up every single morning and actually go to work. However, you've got to be realistic. And I think it's important for people to be realistic because it is also important to know how much you've got to invest. And I call this the access, all access ticket, right? When you're going to Tuana Fontaine, you're going to um, a, a, a delicious festival, there's levels to the different tickets that you can buy. Investing is almost similar. There are levels to how much you are going to invest and where you're going to invest and the results that are going to come out of your investing. People say higher risk, potentially higher return. Yes, it's true, right? It's true. However, you can also lose very big. So I always, I always explain investing by you taking a trip. Let's say, for instance, you are leaving Johannesburg and you're going to Bloemfontein, right? You're going to Bloemfontein. You've got a set amount of time that you believe or you feel or you need to get to Bloemfontein. So if the goal is Bloemfontein, right? So that's your financial goal, to arrive in Bloemfontein. Then you've got to say to yourself, okay, I've got four hours to get to Bloemfontein, or I've got a full day to get to Bloemfontein. That becomes your time horizon, right? And then you've got to say, what are the stakes? How high are the stakes for me to actually get to Bloemfontein? 
That is what we call your risk tolerance to say, actually, I do need to get to Bloemfontein, but you know what? I'm going to give myself a whole day to get a Bloemfontein. Or you know what, Nicolette? Actually, I need to get a Bloemfontein in two hours. So that means you are saying I'm willing to take the risk of whatever financial ve investment vehicle that I'm willing to take. And remember, the car that you get to Bloemfontein is, that then becomes the investment vehicle that you are going to get into. However, not all of us are going to be able to get into the investment vehicle that we want to get into. Unless you are going very risky, you're going your triple M's, you're going your WhatsApp stock files, you're going your uh, Ponzi schemes. Those are those type of investment or trading vehicles, and I dare call them investment vehicles, um, where you're going to find yourself in a situation where the risk is so high that you may crash and burn at any time on your way to Bloemfontein. So it's very important. And I always say, okay, so the first thing I do is I then write out all the different cars. I say you either walk to Bloemfontein, let's say you've got 500 to put away every single month into an investment. You can take a public transport to Bloemfontein. Let's say you've got a thousand rand to put away every single month. You can take your own car and let's call it an A to B and you've got 1,500 to get to Bloemfontein or to put every single month, or to put into a car that's going to get you to Bloemfontein. Then we say, okay, maybe you've got 3,000 rand to put away every single month, and all of a sudden you unlock a sports car. Or you've got 4,000 to put away every single month, and you unlock a flight to Bloemfontein. So you are there by Oartambo, and you are flying to Bloom Airport. Or you've got 5,000 rand every single month, and you're unlocking a private jet. So depending on which car you're going to unlock, what type of investment vehicle you're going to unlock, that in the mix with your investment horizon plus your risk tolerance will determine how well you do when it comes to investing, but also how long it's going to take. And I say this because a lot of people say to me they want to invest in shares. And then I say to them, how long do you have? And they say five years. And I'm like, you're not going to make the money that you're probably looking to make. Because the benchmark or financial experts say, for you to really to realize the best returns within the stock market, you need at least 15 years. At least 15 years. Because a lot of things are going to happen. But a lot of people start to panic after five years because they don't think their investment portfolio is doing the way, they, or it's, it's giving them the results that they want to get, right? And then all of a sudden what happens is that people pull their money away. Gandhi, on the other side of five years, is really where the sweet spot is for investing. But all of this, again, can still be mitigated by having a proper investment strategy, an approach, and essentially what you want to get out of it. And why do I say this? So I read about an investment strategy called RAND cost averaging. And basically what RAND cost averaging is, is we are not investment specialists. Even investment specialists, if we're being fair, cannot predict what the market is going to do. So if you take all the cute little ingredients of investing and you actually put them together, things like diversifying, things like investing an amount that you can consistently invest every single month, and then you also do what is called asset allocation, you will actually be able to push out the results that you want if you give yourself enough time. So if you give yourself a good time horizon and you don't allow yourself to get into a time horizon risk, then you should actually be fine. But what is actually rand cost averaging so rand cost averaging is you consistently investing the same amount of money every single month into an investment portfolio that is well put together right and i say well put together because that's really important in an investment portfolio that's well put together you should be able to see the your investment portfolio perform the way you want it to perform so what do i mean let's say for instance you can unlock perhaps maybe your own private car. So you are going to be putting 1,500 into an investment portfolio that is well put together every single month. That means that whether the market is high, whether the market is low, you are going to remain consistent in putting 1,500. And I want to use an example of a salad to explain it to you. Let's say, for instance, you are putting together this well-put-together investment portfolio, and in the different asset classes, you've got property, you've got the stock market, you've got bonds, you've got commodities, you've got um, um, cash equivalents. It's a nice, well-put-together investment portfolio. And I want to parallel it with a salad. So in your salad, you've got avocado, you've got green leaves, because, wow, who still eats lettuce? 
You know, every time I go to restaurants and they give me a salad with lettuce, I get so upset because I'm like, but to Mamu Dim, in 2021, Lisa Regis lettuce, butter lettuce. Please, guys, let's put together some green leaves, hey? Some rockets, some baby spinach in there. Like, go and find some green leaves for my salad. Stop with this lettuce bullshit. Okay, I digress. So you've got some avocado, you've got some green leaves, you've got cherry tomatoes, you've got biltong bits in your salad, and maybe perhaps you've got some feta in there. Let's say they each are five rand, five rand, five rand, five rand, five rand, right? So all the asset classes, you're buying them at five rand each, right? So essentially your salad is costing you five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 25 rand. Every single month with your 1.5, you're going to get a predetermined amount of salads that you can buy. So that's how you're going to go. And as your portfolio grows and the salad becomes now, it becomes 10 rand, 10 rand, 10 rand, 10 rand, 10 rand for each asset class. Your salad is actually now worth 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 rand. So it's doubled in, in, in value, right? In the bad months where the salad goes down to one rand per asset class, now, actually, your, 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 your individual assets are worth five rand each, right? You, with your 1,500 that you're consistently putting into this balanced and into this well-put-together portfolio is going to give you more salads. You're going to be able to buy more salads in the bad months. That's why we say in a bad market, there's actually a big sale in terms of investing. So let's say now in that bad month, you are spending five rand for a salad. With your 1.5, all of a sudden you are buying probably triple the amount of salads that you are able to buy when the salad was 25 rand, right? Then when the market recorrects, because the market will always correct itself, not at the same pace. So maybe all your different asset classes, your different um, ingredients of your salad might not all go back to being 10 rand. Some may go back to being 15 rand. Some may go back to being 8 rand. Some may go back to being 5 rand. Your salad now that you're going to be buying is now probably going to be, let's say, maybe you're buying a salad at 45 rand. But remember that last month, because you consistently put 1,500, you bought more salads then. Now, all of a sudden, your portfolio in total has more salads at the new valuation or at the new price. So that's how you essentially make money from an investment portfolio. Now, the question is, what kind of salads are you going to be putting into your investment portfolio to make sure that it is actually a well put together salad? So now you're looking at things like individual stocks. You're looking things at like bonds. You're looking at things like retail bonds, government bonds, municipal bonds. You're looking at things like exchange traded funds. I mean, the Satrix Top 40, which is an exchange traded fund, is doing exceptionally well right now. If you want to go offshore and you don't want to give yourself uh, 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 exposure to risk, you're going to the S&P 500, which again gives you a wide range of stocks that are performing really well. Or you can say, you know what, I want a tech ETF that has Apple, that has um, um, a Facebook, that has Google. Now you are giving yourself exposure to a different type of, of market. Or you can add in cash equivalents. So you say, you know what, I don't want to go too risky. So give me a 50% a, a or not even 50% is too much. Wow. Let's say maybe you want 25% of your money put into cash equivalents. Now we've got a thing called cryptocurrency, digital assets. And you can say, maybe give me some exposure, like 5% into digital assets, right? Now all of a sudden you're putting together a well put together investment portfolio. So I say this because I find that a lot of people want to romanticize investing because they think it's going to churn out something that is really amazing but they're doing the bare minimum or they've got the bare minimum to actually put into investing it's important ladies and gents that if you're going to be investing you are being one realistic with what is going to come out at the end but number two you're giving yourself enough time that your money works for you i use the example of a child if you've had a child between conception and actual delivery there is nine months that you've got to wait for that child you can't, after three months, say, you know what, I'm tired of this thing. This thing is not giving me what I want. No, 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 no. You've got to relax. And even after you've delivered a baby, for them to become a fully grown adult takes almost 18 years. Some people even at 18 are not even fully grown adults. You know, some people got to wait until they're like 30, 25 years old to become real adults. You know, so why are you in a rush and you are rushing your investments? What are you doing every single year when you are making sure that your child becomes a fully grown child? You're taking your, uh, uh, is it prenatal uh, vitamins? I don't know what they're called. Because uh, you know, <laughs> childish. 
You know, you're taking your prenatal vitamins, you're taking your, your medications, you're taking care of yourself, you're not stressing yourself, right? Um, and then your baby is born and you're making sure they've got the right vitamins, you're taking them to their checkups, you're taking them to their immunization. And then as they're growing, you're putting education into them. You're investing into this asset because you know that eventually at some point, this adult is going to do amazing things. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's a bomb. You've got a child who's a bomb. That just it happens. It's life. You know, so it is important that when you are going to be investing, you give your investments enough time. But that does not mean that you just invest and then you walk away. Some of us have to be actively invested in our investments because some of us are taking higher risks. So when you're taking higher risks, if they say, for instance, you've got 30% in listed property shares and you can see the commercial property space is really not doing well You can go back to your wealth manager your investment specialist and say you know what? I don't think the property market is going to actually come back up in the time horizon that I've got So can we look at maybe shifting that allocation to something else? That's how you do investing. That's how you actually invest But the one thing that I want to remind you of is to always be realistic with what the outcome is going to be. Mwah! I'll see you guys next week when we delve a little bit more again into our investment th uh, uh, um, series. Have a lovely one.